The United States is only weeks away from a complete shutdown. The world economy is only a couple of months away from a total collapse. The vaccine will not be here in time to prevent a global depression. Many will die and the world will change forever. Never again will we blindly follow government lies. Fed to pump in more than $1 trillion in dramatic ramping up of market intervention. And it is not working. Money is not the answer to save the corporations who spend hundreds of millions to CEOs and screw the employees. They chose corporate profits over the citizens' health. This system is too corrupt to be allowed to stand. The US now has the largest trade deficit in the history of the country. Bank of Canada lowered another 0.5 point today, only 10 days after the last 0.5 point drop. Chartered banks' liquidity requirements also lowered. The world is going meltdown, and the majority don't understand what is happening. Global economies, for the next year at least, will dramatically slump with travel restrictions, bans on public gatherings, and the long-term consequences are unknowable. Domino effect, bankruptcies, debt explosions. Both governmental and private, household debt already at an extreme on all counts, as a result of the 40 years, trickle-down Ponzi. Treasuries are at negative yield, and the Fed may still yet cut more as the crisis continues. When the tentative question of foreign holdings dumping negative returning assets and forcing the Fed to never seen extremes isn't hard to fathom. You're literally better off putting your money under the mattress. Gold and silver, but I am also thinking commodities, hard assets, or cash, at least the yield isn't negative. The Fed is out of bullets, the government is broke, and so are we. We are at the climax of foolish trickle-down ideology, spawned by a global crisis, where the only growth in net worth for the last 40 years has been the top 0.01%, and they ain't sharing it folks. Welcome back to the Atlantis Report. Please take some time to subscribe to my backup channels. I do upload videos there, too, on a daily basis. You'll find the links in the description box. Thank you. Dr. Mark Faber, just like other renowned experts, is warning of a looming severe recession. He recently tweeted, global stock markets are now nearly as oversold as at the market low in October 1987. Expect a powerful and tradable rally of 20% or so from here. Cover all shorts and go long the most oversold stocks. However, do not expect new highs. What we have seen is probably just the first leg in a long-term bear market for asset markets. And he added in his monthly gloom boom and doom commentary. Last month, I opined that a severe coronavirus pandemic could tilt the global economy into recession and that, therefore, it would be favorable for US Treasuries. Over the last 12 months, the long-term Treasury ETF TLT, is up 30% in year-to-date 13%. By comparison, the S&P 500 index is up 6% over the last 12 months and is down 8% in 2020. U.S. Treasuries remain inexpensive compared to European sovereign bonds, and they are a great hedge against a further stock market decline. Near term, Treasuries are very overbought, but I continue to hold them because of my belief that the virus will tilt the global economy into a serious deflationary recession, depression. In recent reports I have explained that I was reducing my equity exposure to around 20% of assets and increasing my cash holdings. I want to warn my readers not to be complacent. If the virus is going to be as bad as I believe it will be, I would not be surprised if all asset prices decline. Most importantly, I suspect that the virus could be the event that pricks the monetary inflationary credit bubble for good, depresses all asset prices, leads to severe economic hardship, and destroys central bankers. Lastly, remember the words of the late Leon Levy, for most people, the most dangerous self-delusion is that even a falling market will not affect their stocks, which they bought out of a canny understanding of value. With kind regards. Yours sincerely. Mark Faber. The US government is buying everything, no need for investors or traders. No need for taxes, US central bank is printing trillions of monopoly money. The central banks think they can make the virus go away by buying equities, spending more money. The banks do not really think this. It's the narrative they're selling to people to flood the markets with their fiat garbage, to get liquidity into a supposedly amazing economy, and divert attention and blame the virus and how they have to generate more fiat garbage to save the world. Since too many people want to be saved, it screws the rest of us with eyes wide open who see exactly the Ponzi scheme for what it is. 
The central bankers and the same people that created this mess want to tell you that it's all because of the virus. But it's absolutely not. It is because of the moral hazard caused by the global central banks enabling reckless lending practices to companies and organizations that for now, cannot repay the loans. That's why we see a 600-year low in interest rates. Received an evisceration of the middle class. We see wealth inequality hit and shatter new record highs. And markets that are top-heavy, subsidized, fluffed, rife with desperation investors seeking any fair return on money, cattle driven by central banking decisions by unelected royalty, tumble eventually. And perhaps the risk of being involved, coerced to be involved in such fake market arrangements should be fully felt. Then and only then, perhaps, we might see some outrage at the manufactured environments created by central banking micromanagement. Make that macro management too. Market cap values and personal portfolio values are based on the price of the last share traded. For the 10 years, the stock market largely goes up without real fundamentals to back up the price. All the HFT, plunge protection team, and market manipulation post a mirage of great values in economy. Consumers getting confidence and kept spending to support the economy. But what to do now? Baby boomer, are they withdrawing now? Will people park their retirement plan funds in cash? Anyway, the stock price should reflect the real value of the company and not some prop-up BS prices. Bubble, need to be popped. This is precisely why most equities are in the hands of a select few, they get the notice of big moves and move accordingly, while the little guy is left holding the bag, and people have become hip to that, everyone knows it's a rigged game, and few people want to play anymore. Very few like to gamble with their and their family's livelihood and hard work for money. If you never worked for the money, it's a much different precedent. The uber wealthy can just throw money around. Gambling and investing feel different, whatever they are doing feels just like gambling. No stable market even during the roughest times is going to fluctuate as much as these, I mean, there are bad investments, and you can lose money, but these movements are beyond rationalization. If you're not a rich blow buddy or something you get screwed, I don't see how they restore confidence in this system, and from where I am standing, it looks like whether or not they wanted it, they will be getting a reset of the monetary system. People all across the world are mad. These bankers will be hunted like plague rats to stop the infection, the economic one they caused, damn criminals. The biggest question of all. How much does the Fed print until the world loses confidence in the dollar? I think we are about to find out as the Fed will print the dollar into oblivion. It was so convenient to have a virus to cover up the billions of dollars being tossed around behind the headlines. Empty grocery store shelves due to panic-driven stories about a virus. Huge wealth transfers from the middle class to the wealthy as we are all distracted. The world government is going to use this virus as a means to collapse everything and rebuild it, claiming they have come to save everyone. They will attempt to install a totalitarian, mega-controlled right, just as they have always wanted it. This has been engineered to collapse the world economy in order to bring in universal basic income after we all lose our jobs. We will all be dragged into a slavery system with no chance of social mobility. Universal basic income may seem like free money every month, but the real price to be paid by us all will be enormous. Bankrupt, busted, broke. The way it is in 2020. Germs on money, people staying at home, suspending gatherings, limiting travel. The fast track to the globalist agenda. Take away cash, confinement at homes, no meetings, no travel, the signs of a police state. Next is mandatory testing and vaccines that won't help, but will do so much more for tracking and detention. What a time to be alive. There are no knowns. We only know what we know that is known. Sometimes you just don't want it to know what you have not known. If you were planning a global financial reset and wanted to minimize the chaos, which would result, how would you proceed, knowing that chaos was unavoidable and economic dislocations massive? Preferably everyone would be in their home countries and in their homes. Temporarily stop all non-essential activity, sports, concerts, theater. Prepare for ending some industries indefinitely, cruise lines. Have people stock up on minimum food supplies. And then, you would shut it all down, introduce a new financial unit and reset all supply chains. This is sort of a starting point because you never want to let a crisis go to waste. This crisis won't go to waste. Certainly, the central bankers that fomented the overbought elevated nature of the markets will come out stronger, just as they did in 2008. 
There will be more dictates, more willy-nilly liquidity provisions, balance sheet expansions, QEs, massive repos, self-authored mandates, and further ignoring their three basic mandates of maximum employment, stable prices ignored with inflation promotion, and moderate long rates completely ignored by prompting flat yield curves and record low, not moderate, long rates. They who sowed the seeds of this market debacle will come out stronger, and the markets will hang on their every word. But unless you are connected to the New York Fed, you'll be last to know. I hate what has happened to America, but if we collapse, I hope we can rebuild a better country from the ashes. Maybe go back to hard work and strong ethics again. This was the Atlantis Report. Please like. Share. Subscribe. And please take some time to subscribe to my backup channels, I do upload videos there too on a daily basis. You'll find the links in the description box. Thank you.